The Church Fathers teach us that without pain, without struggles, without trials and temptations, we cannot be saved. But they teach that it is up to each of us to choose how we will respond to these struggles, these difficulties. And how we choose to respond will determine whether our soul will, will bear the fruit of the grace of the Holy Spirit. The Church Fathers teach us that in our trials, in our struggles, there are two kinds of grace. The first kind of grace we experience when Yes, when we begin to repent and recognize our sins, when we recognize the degree to which we have allowed the world to enter into our soul. Even when the circumstances of our lives beyond our control create difficulties and struggles for us. When we face all of these trials and when we repent and when we trust in God and attempt to be patient in our trust of Him, and his father say, the first kind of grace is given. We will experience God's grace in this pain, this pain of struggle. But in the lives of the saints, we see a second kind of grace. In the saints, the second grace we recognize as given through the experience of struggle and overcoming temptation experience and wisdom enables them to even in the midst of their pain express joy and rejoicing it is a grace that transforms the very soul now many of us will of course have experienced at times that first kind of grace we will we will have tasted the love of God perhaps at times the the fruits of the Holy Spirit will have been manifest in our lives. But for most of us, this will be a fleeting, short-lived experience. Sometimes the Church Fathers tell us God may even withdraw that first kind of grace as a means of testing us to purify us. But the Fathers say the second kind of grace is given and never leaves the soul. When that first grace is withdrawn, there are times when we may feel abandoned by God. When our struggles may threaten to overcome us. When, when the cross we have been called to carry may feel so heavy, we barely know how to take another step. We feel completely crushed by all our trials and by the cross itself. But the Fathers assure us that it is in the very moment of feeling almost hopeless, that almost we can endure no longer, and that without God there is nothing. It is in that moment of recognition that we are utterly, utterly dependent on God, that so long as we endure through trust in Him and in His love for us, that the second kind of grace will be given in the very moment of pain in the moment of trial and that second kind of grace the father say doesn't come to remove our cross to take away our trials and struggles but it gives us the strength the courage the patience to be able to endure and face these trials that second kind of grace gives the the soul a realization the assurance that all of these trials and these struggles are like birth pangs that this life is like a preparation for birth into the true life, eternal life. We are preparing, this whole life is preparation for what is truly important and what is to come. But let us remember that as Christians, crucifixion is not defeat. Crucifixion is not disaster. This sounds like madness to the world. The world scorned Christ as he hung on the cross. And it will mock us too. It will try to convince us that crucifixion is a failure and is the end of all our aspirations to reach God. But crucifixion, we know as Christians, is the only true path to resurrection with God. Crucifixion 
is victory. It is Christ's victory, the victory of the cross. And it is that victory that begins to transform us even now, when we repent, when we attempt to forgive each other, when we are attempting to be obedient to God and trust, trust in him, have patience in our trials, that victory will begin to transform us, transform us even in the midst of our trials, so long as we continue to trust and don't despair. But we must protect ourselves, we must protect the soul. There are in this world today many voices proclaiming heresy. There are American evangelists who proclaim a prosperity gospel. The demons put into their mouths a false gospel that encourages those who seek God to also seek the, the pleasures, the comforts, the assurances of this world. To run away from crucifixion. To recognize the cross as defeat and as something evil. While they then get into their private jets and drive away in their limousines. This is not the Christian gospel. This is not the message of Christ or the church. This message will not save us. It will place our soul into the hands of the world and ultimately the hands of the devil. Let us protect the soul from these false teachings and recognize our sufferings, our trials, our crucifixion are not a failure, are not a disaster. They are a, a means by which we are being purified, a means by which we are being saved. They are a sign even, even of God's love for us. The world will laugh, the world will mock at such words. But our trials are truly a means by which God's love is working in our lives to save us, to purify us, to strengthen us, to teach us to rely entirely on him and abandon all the things of the world. Our trials are not a curse. Our trials are not a curse. They are essential to our purification and to our salvation. But it is up to each of us to choose how we will respond.